Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today we're moving ahead on this flyback converter, but I went to KiCad and opened it up to see if, you know, what the schematic looked like from where, where I left off. And I realized that I knew, you know, I suspected a new version would be out like some Rev 6.8 or something, but no, a 7. Point something else is out. <laughs> so 7.0 came out and it had major upgrades. So we're going to take a look at those upgrades and see what they are. And um, we're going to look at the schematic, okay? So let's just go ahead and jump over there and do that. All right, guys. So here we are. Uh, the window, we're going to pull KiCad. KiCad, sorry. It's KiCad. We're this main window where you can select schematic, symbol editor, PCB, footprint, all these different things you might want to do, okay? Often we'll start with um, schematic editor. So let's just jump in that. And you can see it's 7.0 right here. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, here's our schematic. So it imported. I imported it already, and it imported just fine. I haven't looked in detail, but I kind of looked around at different parts, and it looks like I didn't get any errors, and it looks like everything's here. So we got our input bridge rectifier. We don't have the EMI filler yet. We haven't gotten that far, but we have our we have some of these, a lot of these are placeholders. The value that we end up with, and so on. It's not there yet, but we have this one microfarad cap so that we have a small cap, small bulk capacitor, and then this is a voltage regulator for the control chip down here. And then we have our inductor switching transistor. Okay, and then we have our diode and our bulk capacitor. So that's the main parts of the boost converter. And then we also have this diode up here, which helps charge this bulk capacitor up so that the converter doesn't have to charge this big old cap by itself. So in the United States, if we're at 120, let's say we're close to 170, 180 volts here, uh, the peak values. Well, what that'll do is race around here. So initially we'll have like an inrush current charging up this cap to that peak value, okay? So we'll want some inrush current protection over here so that we don't have that. But it also just makes it easier for the converter. So this poor, these poor guys don't have to supply all that bulk um, current to begin with, okay? All right, guys, so here's the control chip, okay? We might stick with this. I gotta look at the parts, see what's available, and see if this still is a good selection. Here's our current sense resistor. So. When this guy pulses, current's going to come this way, go through that resistor back to the input, and we'll sense that with this guy. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, there's okay, there is the voltage feedback up here. So we have a voltage divider so that we can sense the voltage and feed it back to our control chip, right? Okay, so if I come up to this window, and guys, we're learning KiCad. If you're learning like me, we'll be learning together, okay? And so, there we go. Okay, I just want to show you that we got our circuit into version 7, no problem. Okay, what I want to show you is the, the web page for KiCad. Now, here's version 7 changes. Now, this was like a major upgrade from six and six was a major upgrade. So just since I've been working on this schematic, we've went to six and now seven. So um, let's just kind of scroll down. You got custom fonts. Some of us won't care about that, but uh, text boxes. Okay. I'm just going to kind of scroll down through here drag and drop features Mac OS. So now we can operate with the new Mac chips, the M1, M2. So yeah, if I can upgrade my Apple, which I'd love to do, um, I can take advantage of that. Schematic and uh, symbol editors. So 
We've got new things we can do in that. So that'll be fun. Orthogonal dragging. So this is the way it worked before, right? You grab a part, you could pull it around and you'd have this rubber banding thing, okay? But it was kind of odd because you'd drop it down and then your lines would be on these weird angles and you'd have to fix them. So now, look what you can do. So now you can move it around and, you know, now in some cases, I, I, I would think that in most cases, that this is gonna be better. Maybe they're orthogonal. Uh, and you might be, have an option of choosing which method you like, but this method here, I think once you try it, even if you're used to the orthogonal, this one's going to be better. Okay, symbol editor. So you can now have more custom, you know, you know, pin enhancements. Like you, there's a lot more stuff going on here, so that's great. Off-grid ERC errors. So I guess if you're not, you know, if it's not on the right grid, you're going to get that changed. So that way you, I think that what that means is if it might look to your eyeball that things are connected, but one line might be off-grid a little bit. Wires at 45 degree angles. So that's a great thing. Do not populate support. So this is one of those things where you might want to put a placeholder on your PCB, but you don't want to uh, put the part on the board. Um, you know, so it might be there for different reasons. You might have different versions of the same board, or you might just put it there thinking, well, we might need it, so I'm gonna put it there. But in the end, if you don't want to pay for that, you can do it this way so it takes off the parts list. So here's your do, pop, do not populate window. And simulation model editor. So this thing, I'll, we'll talk more about this, all this stuff, but yeah, I, I probably care less about this than any of the other updates. Uh, database libraries. So it looks like they've increased the, you know, the power of the library. That's a cool thing. Hyperlink on schematics. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, some people like these things, some people don't. That's pretty much probably with all these upgrades, right? PDF improvements. I think this is a good thing. Embedded symbol information. So yeah, that's really cool on your PDFs to have all that stuff. And board and footprint editors. So, you know, these editors are getting better and better. So I'm just kind of scrolling through so you can look for yourself. This uh, layout tool enhancements, this is pretty cool stuff, but I mean, it looks like an actual PCB board, right? So I'm just gonna just kind of scroll through and let you look at the rest of this, but yeah, this stuff is pretty powerful. Attempt to finish. So I think when you're routing, if you're getting close, but you're not quite there, it'll just go ahead and finish it for you. So that's, that can be really helpful. Speed things up. A uh, new search panel, a new properties panel, which that looks really neat. So yeah, this guy's, it's, this tool's growing up guys. Now I think this is pretty amazing on the left they'll highlight a part of the schematic. And then on the right, they'll go to where they dropped them down where you're trying to build your board and you can grab all those parts and put them off to one section real quick. I mean, that is just really neat. So watch this, grab that corner for the 1.8 volt regulator and just grab all that circuitry and put it off to the side. So once you do that, you have like pieces of a puzzle that you can put together. 
I think this is super cool. And a step exporter. That's going to be really good for your mechanical friends. On, yeah, so yeah, some really cool updates. So there we go. All right, guys. So yeah, KeyCat's kind of new to me. Uh, if it's new to you, we'll learn together. If it's not, you guys can give me tips. Please share them on the comments. Okay, I really appreciate that. Now, I've used a lot of tools out there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've used all the big ones. Um, I haven't used Cadence for a long time, but I've used Mentor for a number of years. And I've also used uh, the tool that's kind of shot ahead of those two tools were probably the two biggest tools on the market, you know, most expensive. And then um, Altium has, has kind of shot up. Altium bought a bunch of other companies. And so I've used Altium for years. I probably used it the most, that and Mentor. Uh, when I, I actually was trained on Mentor and used it a little bit, but most of my experience with Mentor is sitting next to a guy telling him what to do. <laughs> I mean, asking him what to do. Uh, the P PCB guy, board layout guys I work with a lot of times, and I don't sit next to a guy. Um, I'll give him a thing, talk to him a little bit. These guys are experienced. They've done a lot. And power is a little bit different. So doing power supply is a little bit different than doing digital circuits and that. So um, usually they'll sign someone to do power who learns that. So uh, power um, you know, takes a little more massaging and that so anyway you guys know if you lay out circuit boards the power can be tricky so i've done a lot of that with all tim hands-on and for years and and anyway so i've used uh i've owned my own software tools and all that stuff so i've i've used a lot of tools a lot of the tools that all tim bought i i used to use before they bought them <laughs> so i've used a lot of different tools out there and i mean that are not out there anymore but, and then also there's a dip trace. I was starting to learn that because that's a lot like Altium. It has that same feel that Altium has. But KeyCAD looks like it's getting, it, it's, man, it looks like it's getting to be a powerful tool. So uh, I picked it up last year just because I wanted to do this project on it and I wanted to learn it and it's free. And I know it's a powerful tool a lot of people use out there. So I wanted to, to do something that, you know, that the community is using and that if I didn't think it stood up to it, this first project, I was going to also do dip trace in parallel and just maybe take off dip trace and just run with that. Cause you can buy a package of dip trace for pretty inexpensive. I think it's like a hundred bucks or something U S uh, and if you're a student, I think you can get it for free or, or even cheaper, but um, you can get a really, they sell different levels of the package. I think you can get a really powerful package for a few hundred dollars, four or five hundred bucks in the max, maybe. So I thought about using that, but KeyCat's free. And not only that, there's they're coming out with major updates on it. So I think it's doing really well, and that's why we're using it. So let me know what you guys think of that, and if you have other packages you like. I know there's some other powerful free ones now. There's some that are web-based, right? And I like to have it on my computer so that if I'm somewhere where I don't have internet, I might be a lame vacationer who just wants to spend some time doing a PCB design. <laughs> but you know, I might be somewhere where I don't have Wi-Fi. Maybe I went up to the mountains, went hiking, and just want to pull out my computer and, and sit there in nature and do a circuit board layout. So yeah, there's reasons why you want it on, on the board. And also you feel like you own it where when it feels like it's PCB based, you feel like you, you, you always kind of, I always kind of wonder like, how long are these guys going to allow this? Or when are they going to start charging for this? And when can I not get a, you know, I want really the money is in your own designs, right? All that time you spent. And so pretty soon that's much more valuable than a free tool. So anyway, KeyCAD looks pretty good. And this, we're going to, you know, push ahead and get this power supply done. I think we're gonna do the boost converter on its own board, kind of like on one of these. It won't be this big because they did this for evaluation purposes. So you had room to play with and connections and all that stuff. But yeah, anyway, what do you guys think? Hey, two big thumbs up to my patrons as always. And also to my members of my channel. I got five members. I've got one team member who 
he has to pay a little bit more to be that top dog. Anyway, that's pretty cool. I really appreciate that. And um, and also, anybody who wants to hit that super thank you button down below, buy me a cup of coffee or beer, you know. Um, so <laughs> oh, gosh. I was just, anyway, just thinking about one of the comments left on my channel. But, um, yeah. Anyway. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for... Uh, everything and a free way to support channels just like the video share it and uh, leave your comments you know that supports the channel there's links down below to buy equipment if you guys want to buy this stuff some of them have um, you know discount codes and if they don't they still don't cost you anything extra to use them um, just takes you to the Amazon or whatever and then anything you buy you know they give me a it's actually a very small disc, a very small piece, you know. But anyway, it's something, right? It adds up. So, but the ones with discount codes and that, they usually give me a little bit more even. That's kind of funny, right? They give you guys a discount at the same time, they give me a little bit more. So, um, yeah, it's not very much, guys. It's like, I don't know. It, hey, it'll build up though, right? You know, so <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for supporting the channel. We'll see you next time.